everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Layla and this channel is dedicated to all of those of you with TSW, topical steroid withdrawal, eczema and any other skin inflammatory condition. In today's video, I really want to talk about the no moisture treatment, otherwise known as NMT, and how you can apply this NMT strategy to healing and overcoming your TSW. NMT has been a really popular topic of conversation on the TSW community. I've read on a lot of TSW forums how happy warriors have been with the treatment program and how quickly it's helped them recover. And then there are those who've been very disappointed and left feeling rather despondent in their results and actually being able to stick to the program. I thought this would be ideal for those of you who are just starting out with topical steroid withdrawal, have just discovered that they have TSW, or for those who have been battling with TSW that I haven't really given it much consideration, but are thinking about going that path, but a little bit nervous about the consequences ahead. But before we delve deep into this topical topic of conversation, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up for this video if you find it of value. And don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've tried NMT and whether or not it's been successful in terms of your healing. So what is NMT? no moisture treatment. So this is a specific regime that was created by Dr. Santo in Japan, where he has a specific hospital to treat those with topical steroid withdrawal and to apply his treatment, his no moisture treatment, to his patients. So Dr. Santo's regime consists of reducing your water intake to only two liters a day, and that also includes the water that you find in your food, to exercising at least one hour per day and bringing your heart rate up to 120 BPM, then also to remove all lotions and creams and apply absolutely nothing to your skin, and to also reduce the frequency of your showers. So I think it's one shower a week. With your showers as well, you are not to apply any soap or any type of shower gel or any other foaming cleansing lotion to your skin whatsoever. Dr. Santo's theory is that the skin needs to dry out and it has to relearn how to produce its own moisture from the inside out. So NMT is carried out at Dr. Santo's hospital under very strict conditions. He ensures that patients are fully monitored where their diet, exercise and well-being is closely supervised. So with NMT, Dr. Santu does believe that because we apply the hydrocortisone, which is a synthetic type of steroid, that our adrenal glands are no longer producing natural cortisol, which in turn makes us very exhausted all the time. We have all those side effects. Go ahead and check out my adrenal glands video right here where I talk about how you can overcome adrenal fatigue. At the same time, however, he believes that if you do the NMT treatment, then you're forcing that adrenal gland to produce that natural cortisol so that you don't have to apply moisture all the time to your face and you can actually create that moisture from the inside out. Now, I do agree with him to an extent, but at the same time, I also do believe that you can rebalance and overcome your adrenal fatigue and re restore that natural cortisol that our adrenals do produce through diet and supplementation. So go ahead and check out that video and you can learn a little bit more. So for those of us who live in the rest of the world, NMT is an option if we are prepared to carry it out ourselves and be basically our own doctors, which normally in the world of TSW, we kind of already are. So NMT is a real personal choice in terms of your treatment for your TSW. I myself did try the NMT after I'd read so many brilliant, successful stories about how they managed to fast track their healing. And I did try it for all but three days. So I probably didn't give it the best shot possible. But in my situation, for me, I didn't feel it was a very successful treatment to go hardcore on the NMT. But I did take a lot of factors and from the NMT program and I adapted it to my own strategy that I had alongside my diet, my supplementation and my homeopathy. Also consider why you had to go on those steroids in the first place because this is really, really important part that I think a lot of TSW sufferers really overlook is why you had to go on the steroids in the first place. Was it because you had lifelong eczema? Was it because you had psoriasis? Or was it because you had some other skin inflammatory condition? This really determines what your skin type is and what your skin barrier is trying to support itself for. 
This is really so crucial to determine because if your skin is like mine, whereby I've had lifelong eczema, then my skin barrier has been impaired for many, many years. And I think this is so important to understand what type of skin you had prior to taking steroids and the need as to why you needed to take those steroids in the first place. Also, I just want to add here, remember the length of time that you've been taking your steroids for because obviously steroids thin the skin. And if you've been applying steroids for many, many years, then obviously your skin barrier is very impaired and very, very thin. And the whole part of your journey to healing is about restructuring that skin barrier and strengthening it as much as possible so that you can have a very good skin barrier that can give you the right protection that you need. At the same time, I think that also those that go down the NMT route who have been very successful with it have more liver issues than perhaps histamine issues such as myself. And it's really about trying to get their skin barrier to, to be able to moisturize itself from the inside out without needing any other exterior help such as creams and lotions. Their skin has far more resistance, their skin barrier function is not so impaired, and then also their long-term collagen structure is just a, that little bit younger and that little bit plumper, so their recovery can be far faster. Now when I say young people, I really don't mean children. I actually do not agree that children should do NMT. I think the full NMT regime with the limited water intake is quite dangerous because it can cause them quite a lot of lightheadedness and that can really impair their function overall. Now I know a lot of people that do NMT aren't really doing the full version of NMT. They might be actually just doing NM, which is just no moisture, whereby they're just not putting the creams on, but they're drinking the regular intake, the normal intake of water, um, and also probably doing the exercise. Maybe they're just avoiding showers or something like that. So there are lots of different versions of NMT. So some people do adapt it the same way I did it, and I'm gonna explain exactly what I did as well. Talk about my experience with NMT and how I took different parts of NMT and adapted it to my own strategy, as it could be something that you could do as well in terms of healing. So first off, I drank water. I drank loads of water. I didn't stop drinking water. I loved my water drinking. There was no way on earth that I was going to limit my fluid intake. I am an on-the-go mum of two small children, and there's absolutely no way that I could actually get through the day raising my kids without drinking more than two liters of water a day alongside also my meals. So for me, that was a real no-no. I actually think it's one liter. I think I'm gonna have to check that. Guys, can somebody leave me in the comments below whether it's one or two liters for the intake for the NNT program? I think it's actually just the one liter, but I've got very conflicting different resources here. So if somebody could let me know, that'd be great. So the Derma Visual Lotion that I use is really high in ceramides, so it wasn't about applying lots of thickness and letting that just sit on the layer of my TSW skin. It actually penetrated really, really well, and I just used to do that a couple of times a day, normally in the morning and the evening, and then also perhaps around about lunchtime, just to top it up, and particularly my hands, because obviously we've been going through lockdowns and so forth, so I was washing my hands an awful lot, so I felt like I needed to have a little bit of extra moisturizer on my hands. So forgive me for those of you I've shown this product to you like a thousand times, but this is the Dermavidual um, Hydrating Lotion and it's super light once again. You can see it just goes on like a spray like that. And it's just very, very lightweight. Um, and I really, really like that lotion. It's just super lightweight and absorbs beautifully. So that's what I did use throughout the early days of my TSW. And I did find because it has the high ceramides in it and it is quite a light lotion, it penetrated into my skin a lot better. Next up was showers. Now, I used to shower every single day prior to TSW, and when I actually were in the early days of my TSW and I didn't know what the hell I was doing, I showered every single day because that's what I had always done. So I didn't realize that not showering was gonna help lock in moisture and create that moisture and it wouldn't be stripped away by the showers all the time. Living here in the south of France, we have extremely hard water, and I've talk, spoken about this quite a few times in previous videos, that I've always put a bit of apple cider vinegar into my bath, and I have continued to do so even up to this day. But the one thing that I really do take away from NMT, which I think is so, so vital, and I think it's something that everybody can probably get to grips with, 
is that I only shower or bath when I wash my hair, which can be one to two times a week. Now I'm fully healed with my TSW, I just have some remnant scar tissue um, around my mouth and a little bit on my neck, but otherwise I have absolutely no itch and I have no need to moisturize too much. So in that sense, I just still stick with my very light moisturizer and I only shower twice a week. And it's almost out of laziness now because I save so much time by not showering every morning like I used to. I literally just do what they call bits and bits and I do that with a flannel in the morning and I don't use an awful a huge amount of water either. I just literally use a damp sponge or flannel and I just get my essentials clean and there we go, done. I will say now with my skincare routine, I have absolutely no need to moisturize my skin whatsoever, especially on my face. My face has probably recovered so much better in terms of not needing to hydrate my face constantly. So literally with my skincare routine, I have my jojoba oil to cleanse with, I apply the jojoba oil, I just remove it with my konjac sponge, and then I put on my vitamin C serum in the morning time just to help me with that scar tissue and back balance out that pigment pigmentation issue, um, which is basically down to my ethnicity, that I do tend to scar quite badly. And then in the evening, I just do exactly the same routine with a jojoba oil and my konjac sponge, and I apply a peptide serum. I don't even put, apply a moisturizer on top anymore. I don't really see the need. On occasion, I might get some quite dry legs, um, and I might apply a little bit of moisturizer once or twice a week. But other than that, the fact that I don't shower as much has really helped allow me to lock in my natural moisture, not strip away that moisture so that I don't need to over moisturize because I'm just not stripping away that skin either. Not stripping away the skin, I meant to say not stripping away my natural oil production. Fun fact you guys, jojoba oil is the nearest oil that we have to our own natural skin type. So go ahead and check out jojoba oil. I'm a huge fan of it as a cleanser, not as a moisturizer. I think it really helps balance your skin out and it really helps as a brilliant cleanser. And as I said, it's the most natural thing that we have on the market to our own natural oil production. Next up is exercise, and this is something that was a real life changer for me. I was never really huge on exercise. Having had two small children, I just hadn't got back into that regime that I used to before I had kids, and I think a lot of mums out there can really relate to this. Um, so it was kind of like my first introduction back to exercise and I found it quite a challenge to be honest having had asthma and then also of course alongside my eczema but mainly having had the asthma I wasn't really very used to doing very aerobic exercising such as swimming and running and biking and that sort of thing so it was a real turnaround for my lungs at the same time I did really struggle getting back into exercise it was not a smooth sailing transition but now I absolutely adore my exercise and I pick and choose what really suits my breathing and my asthma at the same time but in terms of what it did for my skin it was really incredible I made sure that I did exercise a minimum of three times a week five preferably and I would always start off with some yoga in the morning and then I would either go for a walk or I'd go paddle boarding or I would basically try to do at least a run of 10 minutes which I know to those of you who are big runners out there that just sounds absolutely pathetic but for me it really got my heart rate up even if it wasn't for the full hour but I really got to work on my lungs as well as giving my skin what it needed. Now in terms of sweat this was quite difficult. I found that sweat actually really aggravated and made my skin all the more itchy. So the one thing I would do was when I was sweating, I would have a baby wipe and it's these water wipes that I found preferable that were recommended to me. And I would just take the baby water wipe and I would just wipe away that sweat, particularly on my neck, because if I let the sweat dry and then get into the skin, it would be itchy for the rest of the day and probably until the next day as well. So the one way just to make up your mind whether or not you want to try NMT is just to go ahead and give it a shot. I think that's pretty much how we all try everything is through trial and error. I do think NMT is really worth a shot, especially if you have given up your work and you are at home and you're really actually committed to recovering and overcoming your TSW. So if you're somebody who has quit your job or you're working from home, whereby you're not out in the public eye and you're able to really concentrate 100% on your healing, then this could be the quick fix treatment for you. 
this in turn would be ideal for somebody who already has somebody looking after you at home. So if you're a young person and you still live with your family and they are making meals for you that are appropriate for your healing, somebody that can help you out in terms of doing your errands and looking after you and so that you're able to give yourself the rest and concentrate on your healing the best as possible. This is perfect for somebody who basically has given up everything and is prepared to stay at home and really work on their healing. If you're in that predicament, then you know that your healing is the number one priority and that is all you're committed to doing. Then you actually have a much better control and management of your stress levels and also your sleep because if you don't sleep at night, then you can just go ahead and sleep in the day. However, if you are somebody who is burdened with responsibilities whilst going through TSW and you literally cannot stop your lifestyle in order to take that time for yourself to heal, which is totally acceptable and totally normal. I myself had two small children to raise, so there was absolutely not really the greatest strategy for me to do because I was caring for other people. So in terms of my energy and my stress levels, I had to try and manage that. So trying to manage that and doing NMT at the same time just really was wasn't achievable. This goes hand in hand with those might, who might have a highly responsible job at the same time whereby they cannot take any time off from their work and are still struggling with TSW and all the side effects and symptoms. I think adding NMT to your plate can maybe overwhelm you and overburden you and actually exacerbate you all the more and at the same time your stress levels could really be heightened because you're trying to do this extreme program at the same time. I think it takes an enormous amount of commitment and enormous amount of energy and enormous amounts of guts to do this and see it through, especially if you are juggling other things in your life. Do also bear in mind with NMT that you are more prone to skin infections, staph and so forth, because you are not cleansing your skin or not able to put any sort of antibacterial medication onto your skin, then you have to be aware that skin infections are more likely. That is it from me, you guys. I do hope you got some good value out of this video. If so, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments what videos you would like me to make next for you guys so I can put that together for you. And don't forget to check out this video over here where I talk about celery juice and all the brilliant healing benefits that celery juice provides. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.